The Journey Show broadcast on Cape Town TV our mission statement, Cape Town and SA's heart and soul, with me, your host, Muhammad Junaid Shafika, MJ Lee, proudly brought to you by Winners Supermarket and Cash and Carry, Taz Boutique in Gatesville, Suraya's Restaurant, as well as Portland's Meat Hyper and Delhi. We've had a number of MECs over the last, I think, two seasons on this show, once again today, an honor for us to be in conversation with the MEC for Health in the Western Cape, MEC Tiens Bota. MEC, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Junaid. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really appreciating that. MEC, could we start off with the NHI? Lots of concerns centering around the NHI. I think many communities and individuals would want to know how would the NHI primarily benefit the man on the street. Yeah. Let me start off by saying about the NHI that that should be a health system that everyone uh, should have as an objective to eventually have one day in your country. Uh, it is a system which is currently actually only in developed countries and not so much in developing countries such as ours. There are certain components of the national health insurance which we support very strongly, and then there are very serious concerns which we do not support. The aim and objective is obviously something that we can support, and that is uh, to give quality health care to all our people in the, in, in, in the country, and therefore in our province, who has not got, uh, have not got ability to access private health care. So that is the objective. It's a noble objective. We support that. It is more in the practicalities and the detail that we, that we, uh, that we have certain concerns uh, and, and, and which we think is uh, going to be very problematic. Uh, firstly, is that this will be a centralized system. In other words, you will do away with health departments in provinces. You will centralize it under the central government, under the National Department of Health. There will be a massive, massive big fund which we will pay with tax money. Uh, and, and uh, it's going to come at a very, very high tax price. Um, the problem in that regard is that we have a very low tax-paying basis in South Africa. You know, we've got 5 million people really paying personal tax, um, whilst in developing countries you have 80% of the population paying tax, with us we have 10% of the population paying tax. So the burden on that 10% is going to be massive. Massive. We, there are even figures of up to 30% increase in tax just to pay for, for health insurance. So we've got a big problem with the insurance fund itself. Then, obviously, the issue that will be centralized is defeating the objective of, of having a decentralized model where you can have um, centers of excellence and, and do your thing and and uh, choose best, best practices from, from where it's working in a decentralized system. Um, in the BRICS countries, uh, decentralization, of which South Africa is one, decentralization is a very, very integral component of the BRICS countries. Uh, yet now we, 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 we tend to go the different route in, in South Africa. So uh, the other issue is there will be a standard office of compliance uh, to, add, to ensure that all health services in the country will be on a certain standard of, and level. We agree 100% with that. We say that is absolutely necessary. It must happen. Although it cannot be appointed by the national minister or any politician or political body, it must be an independent institution. Uh, so we, there's the, the emphasis on that. Then uh, the other issue is simply that we believe very strongly that this uh, uh, system which is now uh, a, a, a proposed will, for all practical purposes, kill the private uh, health care system in South Africa. Now, very often, uh, also the national government and politicians um, are, 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 are very much against the private sector, and they, they, they almost blame the private sector for the problems we have in the public sector, which we believe is not true. We believe the public sector should lift its bar and its standard yes. closer to that of the private sector and not the other way around. Yes. So the private sector, we think, is doing a good job and we need to lift our level of service to meet their standards. Um, so what we've decided in, in the Western Cape is to have an approach where we, where we support certain issues on the green paper and we expressed our opinion very strongly on others and we've all submitted that to the National Department of Health 
uh, in the green paper process, so there is a very strong interaction. And I must say, many of the issues uh, the National Minister and the National Department is actually uh, um, uh, supporting us and, and accepting uh, what we're saying, and, and I think there's a good relationship in, in how we ap approach the, uh, the, the, the whole planning of, of national health insurance. One other very, very large issue is that we haven't got the manpower in South Africa. You know, you would need, for instance, just with uh, medical officers, doctors, you will have to triple the current 27,000 doctors that we need to have. Now, you know, to, to increase the academic platform, to be able to finance that, to give the budget to that, to, to physically expand uh, uh, um, uh, the, the platform is going to be an enormous exercise. So uh, that is one of the big hurdles to overcome. So what we say in the Western Cape is that, listen, man, well, let's have a universal health care system for all that need it. It must have a good administration. It must have very strict and responsible financial control. And it must have political uh, accountability. If you have those three things right, then you actually have a very good system. So our system is far from perfect, far from perfect. But we have a quality health care system in the Western Cape. It is a universal system. We have excellent management. We've invested in the best managers to our facilities that money can buy. We have very, very rigorous and strict financial control and financial responsibility. And obviously we have political accountability. You know, if I don't do my job, I lose it. Um, so what we see in the rest of the country, unfortunately, is massive maladministration, corruption in departments of health, um, very, very poor management, um, uh, a very high uh, vacancy rate of staff, you know, 50% in some places. We've got a vacancy rate of 4%. And no responsibility for, for, towards finances. You know, money is just spent left, right, and center. There's contract uh, corruption and, and what have you. And then, obviously, politicians don't really take responsibility. Mm. So we say, first, get management right. Get financial control in place and, um, and take political accountability. And obviously there are other issues like the health care system itself. We've got a primary health care system in, in the Western Cape where you have different levels of services. Mm -hmm. uh, you refer from one level to the other or escalate it to another level. Uh, in other provinces, for instance, you know, you go whether you have a headache or a heart attack, you go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. With us it doesn't work that way. We structure the service. Problem is in South Africa is we're already spending on average in the country 2,700 rand per capita on health, which is amongst the highest in the world, but yet the outcome is amongst the worst in the world. So there's a big problem. Throwing money at this is not the solution. The solution is responsible management, financial control, and accountability. Portland's Meet Hyper and Delhi Merrydale and Montague Drive's Mitchell's Plain, ideal for all your meat deli requirements. Renowned for quality sausage, super dry packs, and chicken. Portland's Meat Hyper and Delhi in Merrydale and Montague Drive's Mitchell's Plain, taste quality. Let me see, how do we respond to communities that express lack of faith in our public health system? Many refer to it as an ailing system, perhaps that which we inherited, courtesy of the legacy of apartheid. How do we respond to those communities that feel, you know, if I go to a community health center, yeah. I either wait for hours, yeah. I, I'm not seen to, etc.? How do we try and turn that around if this is the negativity that clouds our public health system? Well, let me start off by saying, Junaid, that our approach is extremely strong on redressing, you know, geographically to, to place facilities where they were not and they were available. So we, we're investing money in the Mitchell's Plain, the Kailichas, and the Delfts, and those places. Uh, we've never, ever spent so much capital than of what we are now spending in this department. We, we spend, we've got 8 billion rands of projects going at any given stage. Mm. Um, we built the first two new hospitals since 
1972 mm. in this province, you know. Um, and we've got many, many other new facilities that we create, especially to address and redress apartheid. Mm. Second is, we say, second issue is which we very strongly uh, um, uh, approach now is what we refer to as the patient-centered approach. Mm. How do you deal with the patient? Are they dealt with in a, in a, 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 a humane manner? Yes. Is it a dignified process? Or is the person just a number? He has got no alternative. He must just shut up and sit in the line, mm -hmm. in the queue. We're changing that. So staff attitudes change. The complaints mechanisms change. So with new facilities, with those uh, changes which we're bringing about, we're addressing the big issues of waiting time. Mm -hmm. Let me say, you know, waiting time is, is a given in life. You wait in traffic, you wait at the bank, you wait at the private uh, practitioner's mm. office, you wait with us, it is how you wait mm. and why you wait, what is important. So are the people communicated to? You know, are they waiting because of the inefficiency of staff? Mm. Are they waiting because medicine is not available? Why are they waiting? Mm. And so we address waiting times as a, as, as a topic, as a ring fence topic very strongly. Mm. In that regard, we also um, established partnerships now with the private sector. We're very strong on that. So we've, we've now done these partnerships with, with uh, private pharmacy groups where our people can go to private pharmacies for certain services mm -hmm. as clinics, as in, 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 the, in their clinics. We, are, we will have, by the middle of next year, 300 of those facilities in the province, which we just add to our platform of services. So... Instead of now waiting at the clinic, you can perhaps go to the f local pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, we are now busy with the um, uh, contractual preparation mm -hmm. to contract private GPs. So that pe our people will have a choice. You can either go to the clinic or you can go to a, to a private GP and we will pay. The other issue is we, 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 we've embarked on this uh, chronic dispensary unit mm -hmm the CDU where we deliver um, uh, chronic medication. Now, you, you know, Junaid, 34% of our patients are chronic patients. Mm -hmm. So we know what medicine they're going to need next month. Why must they come back to the facility? We can come and go and deliver their, their medicine at their home or at their workplace or at another decentralized place of conveniency. So you don't have to wait in our in our facilities. So we are addressing these issues to improve the quality, but also to improve the experience that you have when you visit our facilities. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. I want our clientele, our patients, must, when they've utilized our services, they must be able to say, it was good. Mm -hmm. Just in closing, MEC, two things. How do we cultivate an environment within our communities, where we would want to be healthy, where we would want to execute a healthy lifestyle. Okay. It naturally starts within homes, and it's got to then spread far and wide. That is the one entity. Secondly, maybe you could just briefly shed light on current projects yeah. that the health department is engaged in, okay. or possibly future projects. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked this question about uh, what you can do. What you can do to take responsibility for your own health. Now, You've got to take responsibility for your own health. Um, we are there to support you when you fail or when something goes wrong. Mm. But you f should firstly take responsibility for your own health. The fact of the matter is we're spending billions of rands on, on health in this country and in this province, mm. wasting money on illnesses and diseases that could have been prevented. Mm. Alcohol is a major enemy to health. Um, but also other health, style, health lifestyle issues. So what we've done is we've decided right in the beginning that our single most important strategic objective is wellness. Mm -hmm. Our definition of wellness is to have a more healthier society in the year 2020, 30, 40, 50. So we have embarked on a program with wellness. Mm -hmm. And what we want now is to, uh, to establish wellness centers. Mm -hmm. So you would be able now... I must explain this to you just very briefly. Mm. In public health worldwide, you only present to a facility when you're ill. Mm. But if you have a private health insurance, you go for an annual checkup. Mm. So I say, our patients must have the same opportunity. Mm. So I'm creating for them now wellness centers, 
where you can go once a year while you're still healthy mm. and get a medical assessment, mm. get information, be screened, so we can early detect, we can prevent, and we give you information. Mm. So those are the places we're going to share the lifestyle issues. We're going to have them both static, mm. facilities that you can go to, and we're going to have them at places of convenience. Mm. When you go shopping, there will be a health wellness center. Okay. You know, things like that. And then... We also embark on a, on a massive program of mobile, mobile units. Mm. So by February this year, we're going to roll out the first four high-tech, big trucks, mobile units for school health. Mm. We be, we're going to be able to screen in the first year all grade ones and grade R's and grade ones. Mm. Give them a full health screen, oral, hearing, sight, everything at the school. It will be high-tech, staffed facilities, um, and we're going to have 13 of those. We, 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 we're starting with the first five in, in, in February. So what we are doing is we're taking wellness to our people. And in this, we, 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 we give them information on how to have a healthier lifestyle. You know, many of these things are very simple. Wash your hands, you know, less sugar, all those issues. Um, so we're sharing that, and, and by doing, I'm very excited about that. By doing that, we're going to create opportunities for people mm. not to become ill. Mm. So I'm very excited about that. And obviously, you start through the school system to do that. Mm. So um, we're doing much. The projects, um, many, many, many. We have uh, almost done now with the building of the new George Hospital, the new Harry Kumai Hospital in George. We almost done with the new Wooster Hospital. We almost done. Uh, well, Mitchell's Plain is already done. We are opening it in November. Uh, Kalicha has just been done. Um, we are building a new hospital in Friedendal. Um, we have built. It's almost completed the new hospital in Paul. The la last new hospital built in this province was in 1972. My goodness. You know, but we've also have an array of other facilities. I think we've opened about 20 new. Um, ambulance stations, high-tech, modern places. We've opened about 15 new forensic pathology centers where people can go in a very dignified manner to identify their loved ones and things like that, you know, instead of those old ugly mortuaries you had, you had to go to. Um, we've built a number of day hospitals, the old term day hospital, which is now community health center. We're building one now in the noon. We've just built one in Kwanakatulu in, in Bito, uh, number. We've built new clinics in Grassy Park and all over. And it's such beautiful new design facilities, you know. It addresses the burden of disease that we currently face, but it also addresses on how our patients experience the service. Um, so they are modern, beautiful carpets, paintings against the wall, fresh flowers, People are, t are dealt with uh, in a dignified manner. And obviously, the most important asset that we have is our staff. Mm. So I make a lot of effort. And we've actually contracted now a, pri serv a private service provider to do an official professional uh, behavioral modification program, which is going to run over five years, to change the attitude of our staff. Mm. And I've got a very simple philosophy about this. Don't treat poor people poorly. Don't treat them poorly. We come from this country with a background of, of trauma. Mm. The least we can do now is to respect each other and to try your very best to make life as valuable as possible for each other. Mm. MEC Tien Sporta, it's uh, an honor, a privilege. Thanks so much for your time. Duly appreciated. We know that you've got a busy schedule, but the fact that you could actually slot in some time to chat with us on the Journey Show on Cape Town TV, we really appreciate it. I say thank you to you, Junaid, and your uh, television station for the wonderful work you do in our community. Mm. Without media like you, we, we cannot achieve our objectives. Mm. And I'm excited about your future, mm. and uh, I hold my thumbs that everything goes well for that with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. The Journey Show broadcast on Cape Town TV, our mission statement. Cape Town and SA's heart and soul. Many thanks to MEC Tiens Boota who joined us on the show. If you want to become part of our conversation that we have 
every week, Friday 6.30 p.m. on a Saturday morning at 5.30 a.m. SMS. Your comments to the number that appears on screen now, 084-217-5759. If you are socially active, which most people are, you can join me and the show on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash MJ Lee, or follow my tweets and the tweets of the show on Twitter at MJ Lee Kung Fu. Alternatively, if you want to have a look at previous features, shows, possible interviews that we've concluded already, it has been uploaded onto the official site, mjleekungfu.com. We can suggest download it, share it with your friends and family. Let's visit our sponsors, after which The Journey Show continues only on Cape Town TV. On the show, we met up with MEC for Health in the Western Cape, Mr. Tiens Boerta, who shared a medical perspective in respect of what is happening in our region. Now we meet up with Dr. Mujib Hussain here in Mandalay. He shares the perspective of the medical sciences to be found in the prophetic sciences. It should make for interesting viewership here on The Journey, broadcast on Cape Town TV. And when we talk about Islam, we often boast about the fact that Islam is not a religion. It is a lifestyle. It is a way of life. And we find that through modern science, through many other avenues, continuously the outside world is recognizing that Islam is a perfect way of life. Due to the purity of this deen and the purity of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In our rich legacy, in our rich legacy of authentic Islamic knowledge, we find a science known as Tiba Nabawi, prophetic medicine, reminding us about our duty towards the physical body, reminding us about how our, 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 our health is linked to our spirituality. The body has a right over us, just like the soul has a right. And we know that the Prophet ﷺ was a well-balanced individual. He had the best of physical bodies, his skin was the best. Every cell in his body was to the best of perfection. And we find through that, he worshipped Allah the best that any human being could ever worship Allah. So in Tiba Nabawi, we are taught that we have to connect the mind, body and soul. And to look for purity in every aspect of life is loving Islam. And we know that from the sunnah, looking after our physical body is seen as an act of ibadah. Why do I say this? Because every act of ibadah is linked to our health. The way we are physically determined how much raka'ahs we can perform for tarawih, how early we can stand up for tahajjud, how much tilawa we can do. So every act of ibadah is linked to a physical movement. We know in hajj, the hujaj always say, go when you're young because you can do more. We know in, in the month of fasting that your health determines if you can fast or not. Even for zakah, you need good health to work. Therefore, you can pay zakah. So we find every act of ibadah, it's linked to a physical health. Therefore, we find the Prophet's life in Tiba Nabwi shows us that everything we do has to work towards a holistic purification. Just like we are sitting in the masjid, trying to purify our hearts when we leave the masjid, what we choose to eat and the way we eat and the manner that we do it has to be given the same attention because in there is purity as well. Why is it that the ruh was chosen to be put in this body? This body is a vehicle for the ruh. So therefore, we have to aim for purity in the body as well. So the entire deen of Islam directs man towards a natural way, the fitrah. And we look, if we look towards nature, we look that Allah continuously connects us or appeals to our intellect. Allah does not want us to accept this deen blindly. Allah says, Afala ya'atik, afala ta'akilun, afala tubusirun, afala tasma'un. Do you not use your intellect? Do you not use your brains? Can't you see? 
Look towards the heavens, Allah say. Look towards the earth. Look within yourselves and you will see the signs of Allah. You will see the complexity of the universe and the complexity within the body. And you will see that everything is governed by the will of Allah. And we find that when nature follows its course, the way Allah has intended, we find the fruits of nature being at its best. We look in the cosmos, the way the, the planets orbit around the sun in a perfect fashion. Had it been that our planet Earth was one kilometer closer to the sun, we will all fry to death. Had it been that the planet Earth was a kilometer away from the sun, we will all freeze to death. There is a perfect balance in Allah's creation. And there is a perfect balance within our bodies. If we look towards the earth, if we take from the earth too much and we abuse the earth, we find that we lose out. For instance, the rainforest. If you chop down too much trees, you lose extra oxygen that the, the forest has been designed to give us. When man tamper with nature, genetically modified foods, we lose the baraka of the food. We lose the nutrients of the food. Because man in the in the bit of knowledge that Allah has given them, 1%, they feel that they understand creation. So they change the genetics of a tomato, of a cucumber, to try to make it look redder, to grow faster. But in the process, the crucial vitamins and minerals is lost, and it will forever be lost if we don't replace it. So we find that the entire dunya works in a perfect system. It is based on the fitrah. So what is our fitrah? The Quran explains, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Allah has not created man nor jinn except for one purpose, to worship Allah. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of The Journey. Looking forward to being in your company next week. Take care. Staring at me I've been brave.